Hi, I'm Ross Hogarth, producer, engineer, mixer. I'm here at NRG Studios in North Hollywood to give some tips and tricks and look underneath and behind the hood of the Butch Vig vocal plugin, the BVV. I've got a track by my good friend Bob Malone. I'm gonna roll the track and then I'll start to get into the show and tell of this. So here we got Certain Distance. On this session, I'm going to show some alternate uses of the BVV. Let's start with the Whirly. The Whirly starts the song up. So let me show you in the track what's going on here. It might seem a little subtle, but it really isn't. You'll hear the, the bark of the Whirly come out. Uh, due to the focus here, tube and solid state saturation. And again, this one I'm not using as much, I'm not using the focus, but I'm using more of the saturation. I think you get a, a sense just with me going in and out of bypass how the Whirly that's standing alone, which is you know combined out of a couple of different tracks. You got a close and a far and a, and a, a DI all combined to an aux actually bark more with the with the BVV. The instrument that comes in on the uh, solo of this is the harmonica. Harmonica is an interesting instrument because if we go back to the history of harmonica being played in like blues or, or this kind of music, Little Walter was one of the first guys to actually plug into an amplifier and some of our smaller tweed amps and smaller amps are actually called harmonica amps from that era. So the sound of a harp for me is not like the dry sound that you get when you just put a microphone on it, it's the sound of a instrument going through an, an amplifier. So this harp is really helped out by the, the BV V, and I'm using quite a bit of saturation on it and compression. I'm doing some mid dip up in the higher uh, 700 to get the honk a little more of the honk out that I can get to put back in. And you can see that I'm really dialing in the high cut down to below 8K. So if you listen to the harmonica with and without the, the BVV, you'll really notice a vibe change. The harmonica with the, the saturation is so much more vibey. I mean, you really can't deny it. Now here's it without it. Now I could always pop in focus, you really hear. We're gonna do it again, here we go. These instruments, the music lives in the mid-range. That's something that I've always said, that you can have top and bottom, but the actual music comes out of the mid-range of a song. It's the vocal, it's the keyboards, it's the guitar solo, it's the... So when you dial in the mid-range of a song, that's where the song's gonna live. On the clav, I'm using saturation. I'm not doing any EQ up here like I would on a vocal. Uh, I'm not doing any mid dip. I'm not doing any low cut or high cut. I'm strictly diving into the saturation and the focus. So here's the clav grooving along and then I'll kind of pop the BVV in and out. <laughs> Thank you. 
So now when I put it in the track, um, you can hear how that, like the percolation really stands out a little bit more when I'm using the plug-in. Now something that you may never have thought of to use this plug-in for is the shaker on the song. When I was recording on analog, I always found that I EQ'd a lot of mid-range into my shakers. I found that the spitty top end or basically a movement, all the energy of a shaker is in the shaka, 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 shaka. So it wasn't the two and four that I wanted. I wanted to sort of even out what was inside of the two and four. I'll solo up the shaker and I'm gonna show you the BVV. I'm using a fair amount of the tube and solid state here. I'm using, I don't know, 44% here and 28% there, and a little bit of compression, adding a little bit of the presence in the air, which again is the top end. And now here's my shaker without. And with. Now in the track, when you kick that in in the track, you really hear the track start to move. So in that same light, you've got a tambourine backbeat happening. I want to hear more of the rattle of the tambourine. I don't want to just hear the initial impact of the tambourine. So I've got a little bit of compression. I've got, again, my saturation. So let me show you what it sounds like on the tambo. So when I put this back in the track and I go in and out of bypass, you'll hear like the tambourine has a little bit more girth and vibe and feels a little bit more aggressive and less just sort of uh, like spitty or something. Now I'm gonna turn it off, here we go. Now this song, A uh, Certain Distance by Bob Malone, one of the things he does is he stomps while he plays. So on his stomp, I've got the CLA 76 actually smacking him back, um, which just is for leveling out that stomp. But then I'm using the BVV to add in, sort of make it sound a little more old and a little crusty, so to speak, and then I blend that in as a whole unit to the full stomp. So just to listen to the stomps, you understand what the stomp is. Here's the stomp. Now, if I take off the BVV, which is coming from an aux, so you have just the compressed stomp, and then you add in the BVV. It adds sort of an old foot sound. Now, if you wanna just hear what the BVV sounds like. If I add it in, as I dial in more distortion, I think you'll hear. Now let me put that in the track.
I've shown you the stomp, the whirly, the harmonica, the clav, the shake, the tambourine. I'm now gonna show you the bass. Bass is one of those instruments where distortion, saturation, or some element of that really makes the bass speak in a track. So what I'm doing here is I'm sending through a couple of auxes uh, to the BVV, and then that's combined with my two original signals, uh, a DI and an amp. So I've got a DI, I've got an amp, and then I've got the BVV, and that's all going to one bass aux out. And on the BVV, I'm using, as you can see, a fair amount of the, the tube and the solid state a little less. For me, I, I gravitate often to more of the tube saturation than the solid state on just what I'm doing. I find the solid state to be a bit even more aggressive and have a little more high end, and the tube, obviously, like tube, is a little more girth. I'm gonna play the track, and then I'm going to start showing you what the bass distortion is doing, or bass saturation. So as I'm playing along and I turn it off, it's like all of a sudden all that wonderful mid-range goes away and all the growl. And you will really hear it if I loop over this growl slide, like if I, here's, and here's the growl slide without. So here's it with the distortion or the saturation. That's the energy of the bass. That's, And when you put it in the track, you really hear the energy. I'm gonna jump up to the guitar reintro, the guitar solo on the reintro. The slide solo still has a certain amount of distortion uh, going on, a certain amount of growl, but at the same time, uh, I felt like I could add to the intensity of the slide um, energy and the slide solo by popping some BVV. This just speaks to the focus here, 1K, speaks to the saturation. As you can see, I've got a fair amount of saturation going on here, but I've closed down the high cut way down. I'm adding a lot of low energy to sort of counteract the sizzle I'm getting here. So let me play you the slide solo kind of with and without, and you can kind of check that vibe out. So now let me play it without the BVV. Now I'll overdo it, I'll, I'll start really kicking it around, and if I solo this up, you'll really hear like what's happening, you know. Now if I bypass it, you'll see how aggressive I'm making it. The sound on its own is pretty cool. I'm just trying to show you how you can really take something and dial it into another place and the mid-range on the BVV is, you know, something you can really, like if you really want mid-range on something, it's, a, it's a, gonna become a go-to plug-in of mine, I know for sure, to dial in and reach for. This is just trying to open up your eyes to new possibilities, alternate possibilities, and alternate uses of the plug-in. So, thanks a lot.